Well, hey, mamas, Jessica Coulter here. Welcome to Love to Learn 3. I'm the CEO and founder of Ace Picky Tutoring and your hostess for the summit. Our guest today is Tammy Matheny. She is a mental game coach and an author. So Tammy, happy to have you. Glad we are talking all about confidence. I am excited to be here. Uh, I love to talk and I'm very passionate about confidence. So uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, you are welcome. I know that you work with a lot of athletes, and so we might have some mamas that have athletes at home, but I also know that confidence is one of those study skills I teach because so many teens struggle with it. So I would like to start there if that works for you, Tammy, just why is confidence something so many people, whether they're teens or adults, you know, or anything in between, why is this like a tricky thing? Well, to me, I believe that it's because our society teaches us that our confidence is based on results and or other people's feedback. So I'm not going to be confident till I get that certain test score or until my teacher tells me good job. Um, but that needs to be icing on the cake. Uh, I know I struggled with that in high school. I made pretty good grades, um, except in writing, which if we get to is a great story to share. Um but it was often based on that last test score, that last comment from a teacher. And it, even a no comment from a teacher was just as bad as a negative comment. Oh, gosh, do they not think I'm doing good now? Or, um, and it was exhausting. I call it the roller coaster. It absolutely exhausted me. I was an athlete as well and felt the same on the playing field. So when I was in college, I was like, there's got to be an easier way. And informally at that time, I just started thinking, how can I own my confidence? Um, so eventually, after a few turns in the road, it's led me to become a confidence coach, basically, and um, help everyone with their confidence. Yes, I, I predominantly work with athletes, but I have worked with non-athletes, parents, because um, confidence is confidence. Definitely. And I, I feel like you you kind of hit the nail on the head there when we say it comes from the outside, because I feel like that's something I try to focus on when I teach confidence is the fact that you get to choose whether to be confident or not. Like, I, I love to make it clear. It's a conscious decision. It's not necessarily an easy conscious decision, but I think <laughs> it is a decision. It, it is a decision. And but we're, we have to teach our children um, because otherwise they don't know how. Um, so it's one thing for a parent to say, hey, be confident. Well, OK, that sounds great, but that's frustrating for the child. I made that mistake as a coach. I would tell my athletes, be confident, be confident. And then finally, one of them looked at me and was like, do you know that makes us worse when you say that? I was like, hmm, why? And they're like, because it's not like we're not trying to be confident. And you say that and we feel even worse that we're not confident. Um, so that was a light bulb moment for me. And so instead of telling our children to be confident, we need to give them one or two things. Hey, do this. So then it will help their confidence. Mm, that's that's a shift right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So mm -hmm. in and in, in, I'll go on here, but in, in our studying this and then what led me to my job, I was able to identify four areas that we have responsibility for and that we can control that if we do on a consistent basis, we'll have a steady baseline of confidence. And the first one is our talk. All that self-talk, our thoughts create our reality. Mm -hmm. um, so it's learning to think positively or productively. I don't like to just say positively. Um, you know, sometimes that feels like rah, rah, and I'll have children tell me, I I'm saying positive things, but I don't really believe it. Mm -hmm. um, so if they're not believing what they say, then then we've got an issue. So that's when I say, okay, and then tell yourself something productive, like what you need to do different for the next test or what you're going to do this time, more productive, because we can't have two thoughts at one time. Mm -hmm. So if we have a thought, negative thought, the way to get rid of it is to kick it out with something positive or productive. Um, so that's, you know, again, I could talk about self-talk for three hours alone. So. <laughs> um, the second area is, I call it walk the walk, how we carry ourselves, our gestures, our expressions, our body language, um, because that goes hand in hand with our talk. How we carry ourselves influences the thoughts we're having. Mm -hmm. um, the third one is how we see ourselves. Um, so 
what image do you have of yourself as a student? Um, I know growing up, Jessica, I don't know if you were the same, but I was in that era and I was in the South and there were really heavy stereotypes about females and females could do well in any area except math and science. Oh. I, I think we've broken that barrier a little bit, but it, it was, that's what I saw myself. I, did, I had a twin brother. Okay. He's supposed to be great at that area. He's not me. And oh. it was almost like, I just, that's how I saw myself. So I went to that, <laughs> that, you know, that journey or a self-fulfilling prophecy, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, so it's making sure that we start to picture, envision the student, the person, the child, the, even for parent, the parent that you want to be and getting that visual in your head. Mm -hmm. um, and I, again, I could talk about all, all these areas, but the last one is preparation. Hard to be confident if you don't put in the work. Uh, it's hard to be confident to go in for the test if if you haven't studied or you just, you know, crammed the night before. Um, mm -hmm. But it's also preparing yourself mentally, preparing yourself sleep, preparing yourself food, taking care of your body and so forth. Uh, so those were the four areas that I identified that if we are consistent with, we're going to have a steady baseline of confidence. Yeah. And that's such a succinct way to put it. I'm thinking about how, how I teach it. I'm going, okay, I talk about all those things, <laughs> but I don't know if I make it as clear as that. So that that's perfect. So I, I hope our, our mamas take that and use that. So we've got the self-talk, so the thoughts, walk in the walk, and the preparation. And then I'm missing something. I wrote it down. Um, let's see. Uh, how we see ourselves. There we go. I, I call it see it, be it. Uh, um, so that more in depth than just how we see ourselves, but also um, if you're, academically have a goal then actually seeing that goal and bringing it to life visually oh now something i know you and i mentioned right before we hopped on was this connection between how the parents feel and how their teens feel and i see that a lot when we're talking like homework it's like okay you might be doing it this way and so your teens are expected to do it that way but no guarantee that's actually going to work if we learn differently but yet yeah, confidence is a behavior ultimately we said it's kind of a decision so I feel like if mamas are more confident, their teens are going to feel like it's maybe okay to be confident or maybe even they know kind of what it looks like. Um, I, I think to a degree, um, I think it's the modeling. Um, you know, uh, I have seen parents, well, I'm confident. Why aren't you? And, and that's where there's a breakdown if the parent's confident um, and the child's not. But our children learn so much from modeling. So when they hear their parent get frustrated really easy with work or with relationships or with cleaning around the house even, and there's negative comments, we're just automatically learning that. Or, you know, dad or mom comes home from work and is negatively talking about the boss. Well, what that's without realizing it, teaching the child, it's okay to, to think negative about your teacher, which I know there probably are some negative teachers, but, you, you know, the negative thoughts are just preventing you from being productive and helping your grades or helping your positive outlook on life. Um, so I do believe there is a heavy role in the child modeling it more than actually talking it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious. I, I know we said we don't want to uh, say be confident. We now know that's a, a bad thing. <laughs> But uh, is there something instead we want our mamas to do? I mean, are there ways they can kind of build up their teen's confidence? You know, I have tons of suggestions, but the go, the fallback that I usually like to say is go to the source. Ask your child in a non-emotional moment, not the night before a big test or, you know, a big paper, but, hey, when you're not feeling confident, what do you need from me? Mm -hmm. And giving them a chance to start to take ownership of this. Um, because parents, you, you want to help your child. Obviously, you wouldn't be on this summit or, or you wouldn't be following Jessica if you didn't want to help. But sometimes we're spinning wheels instead of, well, let me ask, what what helps? Um, my mom was a wonderful, is, is a wonderfully positive person. Um, but her positive talk didn't resonate with me because I thought, well, of course, she's my mom. She's supposed to be saying that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so that wasn't effective for me. Uh, and I didn't know then to actually, I wasn't mature enough to have a communication. Hey, mom, I would prefer you to say this. Um, but that's why I tried to challenge parents. And 
ask your child what they need from you when they are struggling. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then try to be respectful of that and give that to them. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, a very good point because we get we have teens on our hands and they're getting older. Like you said, they're maybe hopefully maturing. And it's a question of, yeah, do they know what they need yet? You know, or like you said, maybe they know what they need that they don't feel like they can't ask for it. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, even in today's world, they seem to communicate. I hate to be stereotypical in all of them, stereotypical in all of them, but most of our teens seem to communicate best behind the phone. So, hey, I tell them, hey, text me. If, if that's what will get them to communicate best with you on how you can best support them. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I think it's funny. I just literally read something, was it last night or this morning, about how uh, a, a mama tried, they were trying to do some kind of kind of a family activity and the kids were not into it. And so she just texted them and said, hey, when can we try this again? And she got responses from everybody. Yeah. <laughs> It, it, it's so true and yes we don't like that we weren't taught that way to communicate but if we want to have good you know communication with our children we've got to learn somehow to meet them halfway or you know in their comfort zone and I don't say we should just give in completely but um we need to at least meet them halfway it, it's here whether we want it or not Definitely. Yeah. Now, for me, I feel like there's a big connection between confidence and then like learning. Like, I just feel like there has to be a certain amount of confidence to even like raise your hand in class or to even say, hey, I need help. Yes. And, you, you know, I, I think there's that big which came first, competence or competence. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of people think it's competence. Well, when I'm competent at that, I'll be confident. Um. But if we want to become competent in any skill, you know, academics, anything else out there in life, then we've got to start by working on and building that strong baseline of confidence. Um, because studies, and, and I'm sure Jessica, you've seen them, but studies show us that the more confident a child is, the better their grades, the healthier relationships that they have, the more adept they are at overcoming any kind of adversity in their life because they may not always get the results they want but if they have that confidence they know they're okay that they don't lose their identity they don't lose their egos they don't they're able to bounce back a lot quicker mm -hmm. definitely I'm, I'm i'm fascinated by the idea of competence versus confidence because <laughs> that's something you when you talked about walking the walk i i like to point out that uh Sometimes you can look very confident to outsiders, but you don't feel confident yourself. And so now I'm thinking about confidence. It's like, okay, they're acting like they know what's going on. <laughs> and then as soon as you ask them a question or they're supposed to, you know, know something that you think they know and, oh, <laughs> they don't really know. <laughs> and, and and you're right that, you know, that sometimes people do hide behind the acting. Um, that's why I don't think just our body language it, it alone is strong enough. Just our self-talk alone isn't strong enough. So that's why I feel like those four steps that, you know, I provided earlier, when we bring all four of them together, that's when we have that unbreakable confidence. Mm -hmm. I can prepare all day. You know, I was the type that maybe I needed to study one hour for a test, but I was studying three hours because I wanted to make sure I knew everything. I, I overstudied. My brother called me a nerd. Um <laughs> But if I didn't have that positive or productive self-talk, or I saw myself as not good at a certain subject, that preparation lost a lot of its power, a lot of its weight. So, you know, I could take each one individually. And if we don't have the other ones to support it. Um, so that's why, I, you know, yeah, we can look confident, but if the talk isn't there and we don't see ourselves that way, then, uh, uh, yeah, it's surface. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling some of the some of our listeners might be going, okay, I think my teen's confident, like he's doing these things or she's saying <laughs> these things. So do you have tips for kind of how to know when it's just surface level versus like actually feeling confident? Um, you, you know, I wish I did. I, I think I would be a millionaire if I had that <laughs> key. Um, <laughs> um, but we're all so different. 
I mean, that's the the challenge, but to me, what makes this area so special is every single brain's different and responds and adapts and reacts differently. Um, you know, the best thing is just to learn to build that communication with your child and not letting them think they have to tell you what you want to hear mm -hmm. um, and not them having to act like you, like letting them have that space to really express who they are and share who you are. Um, because I think communication really is a crucial point of confidence. And and I'll just, I know a lot of you probably are, are like, well, I can't get my kid to even look at me and say hello. I know that teens, it's awful to communicate. Um, but you never know what's reaching their brains uh, the more you do try to communicate. And again, trying to reach them in a way that they feel safest communicating. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I think that's a perfect transition into your gift you have for everybody. So I think, Tammy, I want to I want to talk about that now, unless there's something I've missed so far. Um, No, I, I just I mean, there. I, I, yeah. Have you missed something? Yes, because we <laughs> could go on and on and on and on and on. And I still am learning today. Uh, every day it's learning more and more. How can I help, you know, our teens with confidence? It is a journey. It's not a destination. Don't get frustrated. Um, I teach this, talk about it every single day, and I still haven't arrived and I won't arrive. I know that. Um, but learning how to pick myself up or learning how to change my thoughts when they're not working for me um, really, really has been a life changer for me. Um, you know, I used to say confidence is a game changer. No, it's a life changer. Um, and Letting your child or encouraging your child to start working on their confidence now, um, you know, will, will be amazing for them once they get into the real world, into their jobs uh, or what, you know, what may be it or relationships. I, I do think that's a big problem of so much relationships and divorce or issues. One or both aren't confident and they're insecure, which creates a lot of other issues. Um, so anyway, confidence is an important place to start right now. So I have created a co-partner uh, with a guy to create an online, um, it's called the Confident Athlete Program. Uh, a lot of the examples are used for athletes, but the skills, it doesn't matter if you're an athlete or not. Uh, the skills, you know, apply to everyone. My mom is not an athlete. She's, you know, looked at some of the videos and gone through it and it's helped her. Um, but they're short videos for the most part, and you go at your own pace, um, and it's it's a lot cheaper than one-on-one -on -one coaching, but you're getting two weeks free, so it, it's extremely inexpensive, but um, try it out. You can't lose with it. You get 20 different ways to talk the talk and 20 different ways to walk the walk, um, and those are yours to keep regardless if you want to continue with the online program or not. Okay, I'll make sure that links down below for everybody so they can check that out. And then I think you were also offering something else for our parents who purchased kind of the, the gold VIP pass. Yeah. And if you are, yes, well, it'll be another digital download um, that will parents in the mental game. And, you know, I think I've given four or five tips on how parents can help, but this will be, you know, 20 different ways that the parents can help their child with the mental game. The fall. Okay. So another reason to buy that second VIP pass there, right? Because it's like, okay, if you liked what we talked about, there's still more. <laughs> there, yeah, uh, there's always more. I don't, I don't even have access to everything, but uh, <laughs> that's the beauty in it all. Wonderful. And I would love for our mamas to know where to find you if they have extra questions. So if you want to share your website, socials, all that good stuff. Uh, website is TammyMathini.com. T-A-M-I, um, M-A-T-H-E-M-Y, which I think will be in the, the links there. Uh, I do have a Facebook group. It's called Parents in the Mental Game. Um, I have another one, not specifically for parents, but it's called This is Good. And it's just a, a Facebook group just trying to create positive, motivational, inspirational uh, messages each day. Uh, Twitter is ta at Tammy Matheny. Um, it's the confident athlete. And then Instagram is Tammy Matheny Coaching. Wonderful. So lots of lots um, of places to find you. 
one one other free resource I, I had forgotten to mention, but it, it changes each month. But I do put out a monthly confidence calendar. Um, Justin, if it's okay with you, I'll put it on your Facebook group so people can see it. And then if they want to sign up to receive it, you know, each month in their email, they can. It's just a daily quote, daily tip or something that you can use to build confidence. I've had many parents tell me they put it on their refrigerator. And as a family, they talk about that tip to start the day or, or however you want to use it for your family. No, I mean, that's an awesome way to start the day. If you can leave the door feeling <laughs> much more confident than you woke up, that's going to make a difference. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. See, look at that extra stuff. And I wasn't even planning on it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hadn't even thought about that, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Tammy, I have learned a lot. So thank you so very much for sharing. And uh, Mamas, thanks for being here. Keep an eye on your email for your next interview.